this is HC Service Tech and today what we're going over is the low pressure gas switch and how critical this is to a natural gas to propane conversion on a direct ignition gas furnace or a pilot ignition it doesn't really matter but these right here are supplied by the manufacturer in the conversion kit typically uh, it could look like this or it could look a little different and basically they have to be installed on the inlet gas pipe somewheres uh, and these are typically wired in series with your limit circuits such as your plenum heat sensor and your flame rollout switch. So this pressure switch is there in order to open up the electrical circuit in case of a instance where the propane tank has basically run almost on empty or completely empty. In that case, instead of having a nice flame coming off of the front, what you'd have is a flame that's kind of coming back and possibly heating up parts of the furnace that uh, are not desirable. The flame also may not even make it through the uh, burner tube and also the flame rollout switch could end up accidentally getting tripped. So that's a manual reset. So that's an automatic service call where somebody would have to come out and reset that after the propane tank has been filled up with uh, propane. Uh, um, but if your propane tank was full and say something like this had tripped like a flame rollout switch, then you really need to take a look at possibly the heat exchanger or something along with the exhaust pipe. So this gas valve has already been converted to LP. The spring has been changed. I have a propane orifice here. And what we have here is we actually have this installed and we have our alligator clips attached to our multimeter right here and we're reading resistance. So we don't have a 24 volt signal going through these and going to the limit switch right now. We're just reading the resistance value. Presently the gas is off to this inlet gas line right here and we're reading OL. So that means over limit or open line. We also have a uh, gas tap right here. So we have a half inch cap with a brass barb fitting attached to it going to our SDMN6 uh, dual port manometer. I have this manometer uh, just because it's, uh, it's fantastic for troubleshooting pressure switches and I want a dual manometer anyway uh, so I can take pressure differentials. But to do something like what we're doing today, you could just use a standard single port digital manometer such as the UEI or a, another uh, two-port uh, digital manometer such as the uh, UEI version. Those are the types that I typically work with. We're going to go ahead and turn on our digital manometer. And you see that we're reading 0.16 inch water column. We're going to go ahead and zero that out. Because I just had this gas line open. And now we're going to go ahead and turn on the gas pressure. All right, now that the gas pressure is on, we're reading 10.73 inch water column over here on the inlet of the gas valve, and you're reading very close to 0.0, .0 ohms of resistance on the pressure switch. So this pressure switch will end up opening the electrical circuit if the pressure goes down past a certain level, which is factory set. All right, so we're going to determine what that level is, and then we're also going to watch the flame as the flame uh, comes back after we do our initial test. So we're gonna go ahead and supply the gas valve with 24 volts from our 120 volt to 24 volt transformer. And we're also gonna power our 120 volt uh, hot surface igniter. So we'll get this cherry red first and then we'll go ahead and power our gas valve. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to limit the gas flow coming in to see when uh, this switch ends up opening up. Okay, right there. It seemed to be right about seven to six inch water column when this ended up opening up the electrical circuit. So what that would normally do is that would send a signal to the control board uh, telling basically the voltage to stop here and for the blower motor to turn on in order to cool the heat exchanger down. Now we're going to go ahead and allow the gas flow to come up and we're going to see when this switch ends up closing the electrical circuit again.
Okay, so it looks to be somewhere between 8.5 and 6 inch water column when this ends up opening and closing uh, in order to uh, provide the safety for the furnace limit circuit. So now that we know when the, the pressure switch ends up opening and closing at, let's go ahead and limit the gas flow even further to see what would happen if this was not installed on a natural gas to propane conversion. Now you see our water column readings down in 0 0.4, 0 0.3. You see the flame is actually heading almost straight up, and that would end up lighting uh, anything on fire potentially in the combustion area as well. It's going to end up tripping the flame rollout switch as well. So that would be a dangerous situation when a propane tank is low on gas, and that's why we want to make sure that we have this wired in with the limit switches. So you know I included a list of all the tools used in this video down in the description below, such as the manometer and also the UEI manometer and the UEI multimeter. And if you want to help support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash acservicetech, where we're rewarding the patrons there by adding extra content such as articles, videos, and answering questions. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.